<laughs> Just a few minutes ago, I recorded a kind of a long video news flash that I thought was going to post and recorded, oh, probably about a half hour about some of the things that was going on in video and some of the things going on in life and ministry and perspective. And <laughs> took about an hour, you know, kind of talking, you know, relating and sharing some teaching and stuff. And Sure enough, when I went to post it, I posted it, and then when I went to record a second video, I noticed the volume wasn't on. And it's kind of a long story, but this camera we have has issues. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I <laughs> lost the first video about what's going on. So, let this be an introduction. We're not going to re-record re what we've already said, because, like I said before, we are what we are as we are, you know, and that's the way that God does it, you know, is that if he wanted it, we'd post it, you know, if not, it don't get posted. So, praise the Lord, we're moving forward with the first of the new afternoon devotionals, because we have now morning devotions, and we'll say evening devotions, because it's kind of like evening afternoon, you know, kind of not night, but evening. And so... These devotions will probably post afternoon sometime. And we want to present them as they are, you know, and I'm not going to go back over each one of them, but there's some new ones that we're doing, and it's going to be exciting. I'm really thrilled about it. I'm kind of ecstatic, as a matter of fact. And some pe sometimes people say, well, why add more to what you've already done? I mean, you've changed now your old videos, and you've got some new formats, you know, which is like things from the old and things from the new, like the scribe instructed in the kingdom of righteousness. Um, brings out of his treasure chest things both old and new and also presents and reformats sometimes things because you're dealing with different people in different uh, countries even because we are international and we've been international actually we've been international as soon as we started video because it was going into Russia predominantly you know and it was interesting that we had such a large Russian following then gradually we got a huge following from our blogs down in South America and then from South America and Russia, it expanded to Europe and then went to um, China, a lot in China, but then you never know if that's a hacker or not, <laughs> hacking China. And then the United States, I and mean, the United States grew slowly, but gradually the United States surpassed Russia and China and South America and the other countries that Vidivo has seen in. And so it's kind of interesting that it went international before it went national. It's kind of like, wow, that's kind of different, you know. <laughs> but the point being is that we have now even besides the new format which has music and things like that that in some countries they won't let it in but that's the way it goes we also have some new afternoon devotionals that we're going to read because when you ask me why add more why not I mean I love what I'm doing I enjoy the word of God I could live in a day and night and I could talk to you day and night and night and day you could come over and we would spend days if you wanted to sharing about Jesus and the way that the word of God is structured in such a way that we could experience God in a personal intimate way relating that things with which has been part of our lives and not just going over the old things but going over things that happen today and tomorrow and the next day and the things that are like exciting that you've learned new and that I've learned new and that we can add to each other and encourage each other that we would exhort each other by building upon each other's enthusiasm and the spirit of God coming with us that we would just dance out into the streets and tell everyone and start getting all excited and wound up and go forward. Oh, wait a minute. That's what church is supposed to be. Sorry. You see, the sad part about what church is supposed to be as opposed to what it is is the upper room. You see, church should be when people get together there is this conflux of all these men and women of God getting so filled and so blessed and so possessed with the joy of the Lord that they would blast out the doors of the church singing and dancing and going down the street and witnessing to everyone they meet. Only it's not that way, is it? What can I say? Vidivo will be presenting you all the time certain things that might be the way it's supposed to be might be the way that it isn't, but it could be something you can do personally with God and you. Because I myself have done that. I have gone out from the church and started church. You know, I mean, really, because church was like, oh, it gave me kind of like some nice, you know, background material, but it went forward from there. And that's what God wants us to do, to take that with which we've experienced in the Word of God and take it outside the doors to the place where we live God. 
And that's what this devotional will be about, I am sure, as it's called, experiencing God day by day. We want to experience God in a more personal and intimate way. We've been sharing in Vidivo about sharing Jesus in a personal and intimate way. Now, in this series, we are going to experience God in a personal and intimate way, day by day, as we go through this devotional that's written by the Henry Blackaby and Richard Blackaby. And as we go through, we'll do commentary like we do with the Vidivo format. But we'll also have that realization that, hey, don't be limited. Don't be stifled. Don't be stymied by your traditions, whether they be evangelical or whether they be Pentecostal or whether they be Catholic or Protestant. Do as God tells you to do and go forward as God would bless you. Because I got news for you. With so little time left, you are going to see things, experience things, and know things that you never knew before. And there is no way you could have known except that God decided, hey, I don't have time to waste. I'm using you as you are. I'm going to bless you and you're going to be amazed by how much I'm going to use you as a light to the nations. So you see, it's not about those guys or these guys or some guys or otherwise the wise. It's about you experiencing God personally, intimate, and in reality. So let's look at today. Let's see today what God would say. Let's wonder and see what God might speak to us as we take the time to think on these things, to consider well our ways, and to ponder what it is that God wants us to experience today of Himself. A way that seems right. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs 16.25 Things are not always what they seem. Proverbs warns that we can be deceived into believing we are going down the right path and yet be heading towards death, the opposite direction from God's will. People do not naturally seek God or pursue righteousness, according to Romans 3.10-18, through 18, but only as the Spirit awakens our hearts to the person of Jesus are we able to desire God's will. If we make decisions apart from the guidance of the Spirit of God, we will be like a ship trying to sail without a compass. We will do what makes the most sense based on our own wisdom, but what looks attractive may actually lead to sin and ultimately destroying what is precious to us. For our most profound human thinking is mere foolishness to God. 1 Corinthians 1, 18-20 only God knows the way that leads to life, and He wants to lead us to walk in it. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Don't assume every opportunity that arises is from God. The open door mentality. Satan will disguise himself as an angel of light, and his invitation will seem to be in your best interest. Looks good, seems good, feels good. 2 Corinthians 11.14 Yet his way leads only to death. John 8.44 The word of God will be like a light to your path guiding you in the way of righteousness. Psalm 119.105 It can be perilous to follow a path that seems right without first consulting the Holy Spirit for guidance. John 16.13 Take time to seek the Holy Spirit's direction when you face decision or have to make a decision. He knows the full ramifications of your choices and the consequences. The Holy Spirit will assist you to understand truth and to experience abundant life. Trust Him as He leads you. As most people know, though this was a very good technical presentation of the way and the ministration of the Holy Spirit that should be in operation in your life, most people realize my whole adamant recourse is to turn back my course to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 and to say, trust in the Lord with all my heart, lean not in my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge Him and let Him direct my path, and to make that a teaching over and over again that every time you think about it, take it apart. And remember, don't 
don't go by your own understanding like we were just taught. Rather, sit down and be led by God. Be led by the Spirit of God. Be, be led by the Word of God. Be led by how God uses the Word to apply it to you. Don't just go by principles. Principles are nice, but you know what? Principles are in school, and you're out of school. You're in real life now. I'm sorry, but there's a thing called book knowledge, and book knowledge is wonderful until you try to put that book into practice, and then you find out that there's life's experience. And in Experiencing God, we're going to talk about that a lot, that you can take almost anything you want and make a principle of God out of it from the Bible, and you will fail and go to hell based upon your principles. Because without a personal relationship, principles will fail you every time. They are intellectual stimulation with which you think by logic that you can come up with the predicate of knowing what the premise is by way of the logical conclusion with which you think the mind operates. And God says, no, it is not. By my spirit, saith the Lord. And that's what God says. It is not by might, not by power, not by logic, not by intellect. Not by the things we see, not by the things we feel, and even not by the things we hear, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. And that is why we must turn our attention back to the Spirit of God, that He has given us as a comforter. He has provided for us as a teacher. He has instructed us to yield to our directions and our objections of what we think we should do when it's reality of what God is telling us He wants us to do in any given situation and in every application of every moment of our life. Which is why we must be led by the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. For it's not just a question of being, oh, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and I have the gifts and I can go do my thing. Because you can lead yourself straight down the road the old false prophet found when he was leading and being led by an old prophet who told him to come spend the night with me and he disobeyed what God said the reality of our obedience and our disobedience still even though we exist under grace and we are saved by salvation that God has provided still has that question of will you seek to do God's will and be pleasing in his sight every moment you live or would you rather do your own thing and say, oh God, forgive me at the end of your day for all the things you ignored him that he's trying to tell you along your way? Because that's the reality of why things don't work out in your life as God intended them to. To not just bless you with abundance, as he mentioned, but to be abundantly blessed as God uses the word correctly to say to you whether you have the abundance of goods or the abundance of faith or the abundance of joy God blesses you abundantly in and of itself of what the Spirit chooses to use in your life that you would pour forth out of your soul rivers of living water that others may be made whole by submerging themselves in the grace and mercy that you're giving out from that with which you've experienced God in and so that's why in experiencing God we want to make sure we zero in on what God is telling us to do. That we experience God today, that we know we are children of the living God and not the dead. That our theology is not of old men that have died before us, but rather our theology is the Godology of a living God who is alive and able to speak for himself and to teach us himself and to lead us himself as he is himself in us. For if it isn't God in us, then it's not God with us and it'll be God against us for the only way to be saved is if God is for us in us with us leads us and abides in our heart for that's what Jesus came to do he said father I pray that they may be one as you and I are one so I pray today in experiencing God stop what you're doing if you haven't experienced God today, if you haven't taken this word to heart, replay this and start listening to what's being said there. Listen to what seems right and realize you're doing what is wrong because it seems like the right thing to do. But it isn't faith exemplified. 
For faith is a manifestation of that with which you can trust God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it demonstrates itself by the realization that God intervenes and interjects himself in your life by proving out the faith that you have in him. By his revelation, not by your exemplification. You can say you have faith and do and flip on a ride or do other things that you call marvelous in the sight of men. But when God comes down and validates your faith, you know that that is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Because then you have demonstrated what happens when a soul is committed unto God and he experiences God, the living God, the Father of Jesus himself, our Lord and our Savior, in a real and personal way. Then it's not a question of whether you know God, because then it becomes a reality that you show God everywhere you go.